Hopefully you saw the wave propagate further away from the source in a nice circular pattern. By the end of the 100 time steps, the wave should have reached the PEC, and it should have started to reflect from the four sides of the grid. Here's a snapshot of the HY fields from my code after 100 time steps. Now, we're not quite done yet, because if we had to lower DT in order to maintain stability, we should consider if there are any issues we should be aware of after converting our code from 1D to 2D. In module lecture FTTD4, we examined the stability limit, but we also compared the numerical phase velocity. The numerical phase velocity is omega over k wave number tilde. And for free space, the physical phase velocity should be C. So a question is, when our wave is propagating outward from the source and always in this two-dimensional grid, are we getting a phase velocity close to the speed of light? Going back to the equation that we started with for a 2D, we previously solved for the numerical angular frequency. Now let's assume we will run our code in a stable regime, which means omega tilde will be a real number. And let's also say that it is equal to the physical omega. So we're going to have omega tilde delta t. We're going to assume it's equal to omega delta t. So we're running our code in the stable regime. And also, if we assume we have a square lattice, delta x is delta z, then we can write this. Instead of delta x, I'm going to have just delta here and here, and also here and here. And here, I'm going to take off the tilde. So we're going to assume that is equal to the real tilde, the uh, omega angular frequency. It's a bit awkward to analyze this result for a wave propagating in any direction in a two-dimensional grid. Specifically, it's a lot easier if we, have, if we can just have one term on the left side instead of these two. So can you come up with some conditions under which the left side of this equation simplifies to just one term?